All right, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the recent advances, uh, Dr. Moskowitz, of changing the role that PET imaging is playing in the management of Hodgkin's disease. Uh, can you talk a bit about PET scanning for initial diagnosis, staging, and prognosis? FDG PET is an imaging tool. And for folks who don't use it all that often, think of CT is going to tell us about the size of the lesion, how big things are, and PET more about the activity. But the interesting thing about PET scanning is it's also very good to pick up sites of disease outside of the lymph node system. And in fact, um, PET scanning can upstage patients, uh, especially patients with early stage disease and B symptoms, fever, night sweats, or weight loss. So a patient with stage 2B Hodgkin lymphoma uh, for a protracted period of time, it wouldn't surprise any of us in the panel that we would do a PET scan and find that the patient would have multiple bony sites of involvement. They'd light up on you. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you would miss that on a CT. So, so that, can you use PET then for primary treatment response evaluation? Well, first let's get back to PET. Is, is Should a patient with Hodgkin lymphoma get PET for staging evaluation, and I think the answer to that is, is yes. Can we go, before you go any further, anybody going to vote no on this one? No, I think that that's, okay. uh, that's a rule I, these and days. And I think in early stage disease, as we're integrating now radiation therapy in a, in a um, involved site, it's even more important. The second rule is there was consensus criteria to determine what uh, requires a patient to be in remission. That was published by Bruce Chesson in 2007. And rule number two is in the aggressive lymphomas, your PET scan has to be negative um, at the end of treatment, usually done four to six weeks post-treatment. So therefore, the patient is going to get a pre-treatment PET scan and an end-of-study PET scan. So that pretty much answers the question of monitoring response evaluation with PET scan. That answer is also yes. Well, response evaluation is different than determining if somebody is in remission or not. Um, seeing how a patient is doing is your disease shrinking. Sometimes that could be done by physical examination, it could be done by CAT scanning, or it could be done by PET scanning. In, and that's usually done in the middle of treatment, the word is interim. Um, interim imaging studies, especially PET scanning, is commonly done in the United States, but I think I, I can argue for us all and say that that's still an investigational tool. Okay, now he's, he's included you in this I did, I, I brought everybody <laughs> into my fold there just That's now. Right. You know, my experience is that when they do that, there's usually an outlier. Does anybody disagree? <laughs> I'm the outlier, I wanna be excluded. So okay. I, I personally really like to know when somebody's responding by PET because if they're not having an adequate response, I wanna cut my losses with that regimen and move along. I don't want to give somebody four cycles or six cycles of a regimen and then find out at that point that it, it really didn't serve that, them. Yeah, that, that is a, uh, uh, the big can of worms that we're opening right now, we may as well open it at now. Go right um, ahead. I think that um, as academicians, which we all are, uh, we certainly can do that. And we have different things that are available to us at our centers if um, patients need to have their treatment changed. We have excellent radiology at our centers who can help us with uh, the readings on these scans. The problem is um, the change of therapy from treatment A to treatment B has yet, as far as I know, to show an improvement in survival. Um, I think we're all waiting for that to happen. We believe that continuing the same treatment in a patient that is destined to do poorly is ethically difficult to swallow. However, just by changing the treatment to something else doesn't necessarily mean that we're helping the patient. And, I, and that's a difficult one for us all to, to figure out what so to let do me with. Go, let me go a little further with you. Supposing you go all the way through, you go to post-treatment. Now you do a PET scan, and that PET scan is positive. Do you begin salvage therapy right away? Do you go to biopsy? Do you do more cross-sectional imaging? What do you do? Well, you absolutely need to do a biopsy, particularly in Hodgkin's, where you have a lot of false positive PET scanning. I think it's essential. Um, and uh, again, I think part of the discussion, uh, other than outcome in terms of survival or progression-free survival needs to be toxicity. And we, again, we wanna decrease the toxicity. We don't wanna give unneeded therapy. Um, we want to really know that the person needs that therapy and we're you know, okay with the ensuing toxicity that may occur. For I think, yeah, uh, that's, it's, it's a tough decision. While we were decision. talking about yeah. rules, yeah, um, rules. One, of, one of the reasonable rules to accept is at the end of therapy that a positive PET scan before one un embarks on an endeavor like a stem cell transplant recommendation needs to be confirmed with a biopsy. And it is very rare that we would in, go forward with that. In the middle of therapy, it's a different question. 
in I the see. interim of a clinic, a treatment course, we are at a point where we're trying to determine whether that PET scan is sufficiently prognostic to act on that information, or are the false positives too high that a change in therapy can't be recommended, and that's still the purview of ongoing clinical trials. All right, I want to I want to morph then into serial imaging in asymptomatic patients that are in remission. You guys have all said, oh, you're in remission. Now maybe or maybe not, we want to go ahead and, and get uh, some images serially. What does the NCCN recommend for surveillance imaging here? Well, I, I think this is a, an area that's in flux. Right now the NCCN guidelines <laughs> recommend that a scan uh, be done every six to 12 months for the first two years. And that's because the greatest period of relapse is during those first two years. And we would like to act on um, a finding if it occurs. Um, I think there's a heightened sensitivity to lifetime exposure to radiation, and we are trying to critically look at what is the impact of serial imaging study over the lifetime of that patient, how frequently are we picking up disease that we wouldn't otherwise have identified. And, and unfortunately, that's a difficult question to get at prospectively, but we're working on sorting that out. I've changed my imaging uh, schema dramatically over the past uh, three to four years. I, uh, for early stage Hodgkin lymphoma, in a patient who achieves a complete remission where the cure rate is be ni between 90 and 95 percent, the number of imaging studies I do are minimal. However, for advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma, as Jonathan said, where three in, three in ten patients are going to fail, and they're going to fail more likely earlier than late. Um, as someone who's done a lot of transplants for Hodgkin lymphoma, I do believe that catching it earlier offers the patient a better chance of having a long-term, uh, better outcome. Okay, well, let, let's put the pedal to the metal on this one. I'm looking for data, and specifically outcome data. Is there any outcome data for patients with clinically versus radiologically detected relapse? Can you wait for something clinical, or is the X-ray now going to be the gold standard? It, you know, the, the data that's out there is not very strong. In, in other lymphoma situations, the data suggests that most of the relapses that are detected, no matter what type of strategy you're using, turn out to be clinically detected. Because although you might be doing scans every six to 12 months on a patient, if a patient's relapsing, they'll often walk in the door and say, I feel this lump, or I don't feel well, or my B symptoms are back. So in my mind, I agree with Craig that, that theoretically, you'd think that picking up relapse at an earlier time is going to import uh, prognostic information subsequently if you're trying to salvage the patient. But there really isn't data that proves that, and it may not be the case. 